good evening everybody uh, uh, warm welcome to all of you to this webinar on uh, implementation challenges to rti in goa and in some session i must say uh, that goa has actually received uh, uh, short trip in all the so called official history of the rti movement in india because while people's movement uh, demanding right to information laws in other states have received a lion share of attention but the story of how the movement for transparency in goa unfolded and how it resulted in one of the first of the two laws passed uh, in any state in india in 1997 that has actually not been adequately documented uh, so uh, we know that goa is a pioneer state uh, your provisions in the rti law influence the drafting process of uh, the central rti act as well of course there were other states rti laws which also uh form the basis for drafting the central law uh we know that there is a very vibrant civil society uh, <coughs> sector in goa working on a variety of issues not just transparency but also accountability exploitation of uh, labor exploitation of children environmental issues in the debate uh, and i'm sure there are many many other issues as well which uh, i am very familiar with but transparency is something that cuts across for traverses all these sectors of uh, citizen activism and the right to information law provides the tool for uh, everybody who would like to see change uh, happening in our administration in our public affairs the first step towards bringing about change is to instill greater transparency in the decision making process and actions of public authorities and that is what rti is meant to do so i'm sure there is a very rich experience of use of rti in goa not just under uh, the state act but also under the central act uh, there are several stalwarts also who are uh, who have been associated with the rti movement i would like to welcome you all i hope and uh, wish that this is the first of several brainstorming sessions uh, that we will embark upon to discuss how to improve implementation of the rti act in goa my own organization commonwealth human rights initiative uh, may not be familiar with this everybody but we been in india since 1990 Um, in 1993 we've been working on right to information amongst other issues including access to justice in and since 1997 we were part of the process of uh, drafting the rti bill at the central level uh, within civil society and later on we gave several inputs to the government of india before it tabled a very weak version of the rti bill in parliament in december 2004 and after that uh, we were invited on a couple of occasions by the department related standing committee <coughs> and law personal and justice to uh, present on, on best practices on right to information law in other countries and uh, we were able to share a lot of good practice standards from other countries and it was quite a and uh, quite encouraging and quite satisfying that gratifying to see that many of the recommendations that civil society made including our own found uh, Uh, their way into the final version of the RTI bill that was adopted by Parliament. Ever since its adoption and its uh, enactment, CHRI has been engaged in conducting a series of uh, training programs and uh, a series of uh, workshops for civil society and government. Uh, we have uh, conducted countless workshops so far. We have brought out user guides in multiplicity of languages. on the right information uh, i would like to invite you all to visit our website uh, it is www.humanrightsinitiative.org uh, i will put it on the chat box later it has a lot of rich material with regard to rti implementation in india we also file and right to information requests uh, particularly with central government to make this decision making process more transparent thereby uh, demanding greater accountability of uh, people in power in the central government we also filed rti on a variety of issues related to people's access to justice police reforms prison reforms and human rights issues across several states in india many of our publications on issues of police accountability and accountability to the administration are based on data that has been obtained here i welcome you all to look at our publications on the right to information thank you fred for putting up our website address on the chat box uh, i will stop here now and i will hand over the floor to fred to uh, moderate this discussion like you mentioned in the discussion on the rti whatsapp group 
there is no set agenda this is a brainstorming session everybody is free to raise their issues their experience voice their experience uh, ask questions uh, seek clarifications for doubts make suggestions but everything has to be connected with right to information and answer the issues with regard to transparency i would request everybody to maintain the decorum here uh, please try and avoid raising contentious issues on other teams because as you know we spoil the flavor of the discussion here our main purpose is to look at how do we strengthen the implementation of right to information in goa there could be issues related to implementation in other parts of the country as well that's also fine so they are to raise uh, but what was being said in the rti whatsapp group was to see how we can actually turn some of the issues that are plaguing the successful implementation the effective implementation of rti in goa into election issues so that politicians who come out to seek votes in a couple of months from now will actually take these issues into consideration and make some promise to the police in their manifestos or in their public uh, expressions of their intent of what they would like to do if they were to come to power so this platform is meant to provide a space for everybody to discuss freely and uh, frankly all these issues with regard to the use and implementation that here i will stop here and hand over the floor to uh, frederick over to you frederick uh less of handing over the flow and more of acting as umpire uh <laughs> since there are so many people here and uh, some have very well versed in the RTI names i recognize and names i don't recognize maybe avinash tavares and a uh, lot of others if it's okay by all of y'all can we can we take one or two minutes each just to have a round of introduction we go we go by making a round of introductions and saying which aspect of the act we are looking at where we are having problems where we need help any suggestions maybe in one or two minutes then we'll keep it as a open floor for anyone to to have more detailed interventions but to give everyone a chance unless you don't want to speak which is also okay which is also okay but avinash since i recognize your name and i know you've done so much work can i request you to start please uh, glad to be joining all of you uh, and uh, i thank for holding such a thing it much needed uh you know i'm i'm right now working with, uh, with a couple of parties on the manifesto one of it is officially but uh, we are trying i mean I'm, i try to push as much as such as it is possible uh, but the thing is we need we do need support from civil society because you know uh, not enough people are making talking about rti during the selection chaos and uh, the issues go on different directions so yes uh, hopefully uh, some that at least can come out of this country this is, this is an election season and uh, the only thing i would like to say one of the major thing missing in goa is an online rti uh, application system so that would solve a lot of problems logistically considering this covid and all so with that i hand over the the, the thing to uh, to the next speaker thanks so much for listening to me you know i i'm a great fan of uh, of avinash because uh, his bias and my bias tallies he's done it much more effectively uh, using information as a tool for uh, activism in that sense uh, and uh, and i'm grateful that he has done it uh, he put it very succinctly anyone else who's willing to go next uh, i i i'll go i'll i'll also it's my duty also to to introduce myself sorry some glitch with my camera because i've got about 100 tabs open and i don't know which which tab is hogging my camera so zoom is not opening my camera here Uh, my name is frederick i've been a journalist for donkey's years <laughs> too long too long for my own good and uh, <coughs> i've been fascinated with the rti act for a long time since uh, 1997 when the goa act came about i feel very strongly that uh, journalists have not used it enough you know and while we are defensive and critical about the act we've not even tried it in many cases and sometimes i've got good uh, responses through the act i've got tons of information uh sometimes i have not got information some most of the time i have also been lazy in not following up uh, going i've never been to a single uh, on a single appeal so that is clearly my failing as avinash says uh, the information that that comes out to me stays with me so that's not good enough we need some some way of sharing it uh, so that the wider community is aware okay uh we need to team up with others so i was struggling to get information about the collapsing sea harriers because out of 31 bought at about 80 crores each in those days uh, you know 16 collapsed crashed without a single uh, without taking part in a single operation and that was a area of concern so i met this rti activist from kerala who pushed and got it and you know together we did uh, that story uh, 
but uh, the other thing is that even the small things like post office efficiency you know uh, they have been shaving off one hour of the operations every day by closing one hour early. There is some agreement going on between the unions and the uh, management and they keep it kind of uh, between themselves and they are quite happy with that arrangement. So that was uh, changed for a little while and now they have gone back to it. So two issues consistency among ourselves and uh, sharing of information. Who will take it next? You are most welcome. Need a volunteer. Hi, I can I can volunteer. This is Karan here. Hi, sorry, I just joined a bit late. Please, please. Uh, just to say hello. Uh, I I really don't have any agenda. I just thought I'd listen and see what uh, people have to say. Uh, I think I have made uh, my main observations known on the on that uh, <coughs> WhatsApp group. Uh, basically, I would say that from my experience with RTI, which has not been huge, I must be said. I think I've done three RTIs. Um, my main observations are that obviously the the way that you frame your questions is uh, is very key. Uh, we all know that, but also I think equally key uh, is probably who you get as a PIO and who uh, you know who he reports to and how sensitive does the information that you are asking for seem. So in some ways, it's kind of good a good idea in my experience to try and disguise. You know, if that information is going to try, is going to possibly get the very people in that department into some kind of trouble, possibly, is to kind of disguise the questions in a way that that, that isn't apparent. Otherwise, you know, the chances of your you're not you're not getting that information increases. That's my little experience that I've had. And then, you know, once you get into that whole screening uh, <coughs> process and so on, I think I mentioned this on the group as well. I think you know that whole business of first appeals is really in, in all the well, certainly two of the three that I did uh, turned out to be a complete waste of time because they belong to the same department. Uh, they try to protect their own. Uh, they, it reflects badly on them that the PIO has not given you know the information that, that he should have given. So they too try to find some technical way of kind of avoiding giving them the full information. And even in the cases where they do order that the information be given to you, when the PIO doesn't give it, uh, because there's kind of almost no real penalty on them, uh, then you're forced to waste even more time by going to the second appeal. Uh, and, you know, I, I haven't actually taken it that far, uh, so I don't really know about uh, what the experiences would be there. But but if, if the whole first appeal could be done away with, because, you know, in my experience, it's just a bit of a waste of time when they belong to the same department, uh, that would probably be a good thing. I do think that the online uh, application process would be very good uh, because it would uh, make things much easier. You don't have to go traipsing around the place. Uh, there's also a physical, uh, a digital record of it. I guess it becomes more difficult for them to kind of just avoid your, your, uh, your coming back to you. I mean, there is one RTI that I have applied for. I have not got the answers. I have got a first uh, appeal verdict in my favor. Uh, and uh, you know, months have passed, and I still haven't got the answer uh, because this uh, PIO really, you know, knows that there's no, no uh, real penalty that he's going to have to pay. Uh, what else? Um, yeah, I think you know, sharing would be great because I think we all probably pick up some information that is that is very worthwhile for the general public to know. Some of it might be very specialized, but some of it is probably <coughs> for a lot of people. So if there could be a repository somewhere and it could be easy to access in some way without you having to kind of crawl through a very complicated spreadsheet or you know, you know, with very technical difficulties, that would be really handy. Uh, and I think we all know that section four is virtually completely ignored. Even the village panchayats that have got websites, they never update their websites. They don't even give information which is so easy to put on the website, like when is the next gram panchayat? And when you go and visit the, the secretary, he says, oh, you know, we put it up in the churches. <laughs> you know, does everyone go to church? Uh, yeah. The, the, the intention is that everyone should not know that there is a gram panchayat. You know, and that, that is very much the feeling that, that one gets. What, what does it take, if you've got a website, what does it take to put it onto the website, next gram panchayat in two weeks' time, such and such uh, location and such and such uh, time? But, but, you know, there again, I don't know what the solution is. I think one just needs to kind of press for tougher implementation of that section in some way. Anyway, that's me done. Thank you very much. Karan, very, very interesting points and a lot of interesting points, I should say. Uh, 
uh, yeah uh, including the thing of people being from the same department therefore covering up for each other uh, mm. the thing of panchayats not sharing information partly it's it's because of uh, i mean no one wants an open society really because openness is threatening to all of us in a sense and partly it's also technical no i mean like their job is their their primary constituency is somewhere else their primary constituency is just managing the crowd so what we do is we subvert the system and have facebook uh, village groups where we share the information and that really travels like so we put it out ourselves we don't wait for them to put it out but of course that is not the solution that is not the solution yeah but then yeah <coughs> For someone who doesn't who doesn't happen to belong to that Facebook right. group or right. doesn't have to know about the Facebook group, right? Uh, True. True. It would not take a lot. I mean, to put yeah. one line onto a website which is already your administer administrate, it doesn't take a lot. But I don't think the intent is there. They're not acting in good faith. But then that's the main thing. Yeah. Uh, Malan was actually having some problem with his uh, with his mic, which is which is sad. because uh, he w- has this idea about creating this uh, database of you know rti decisions and and things like that which could be shared okay he's saying it's his hardware he has a hardware problem malan has a hardware problem so in the meanwhile uh, <coughs> would someone like to go next just two minutes talking talking in the preliminary round just talking about how you see the act uh, what are your priorities what what are your problem areas that you see how we could collaborate Mr Bruno Good evening everybody Yeah Linus Linus please Yeah my name is Linus Bruno calling from Bombay and uh, initially I had a problem uh, every time I wrote to the police in uh, Puruvari they would reply that uh, prove your citizenship I had the same problem with uh, the RBI <coughs> so uh, then I would send something and now I, as uh, Mr Venkatesh has guided me I write a, I'm Indian citizen and uh, I mark something like uh, the uh, and I say refer to section three of the Act, reference C I C, oblique zero. Uh, I mean O K C two zero zero five two zero eight zero zero one six dated twenty six five two thousand eight. I'll put the things on the chat box. Now I don't have any problem with that. However, I filed uh, since they have mentioned that uh, the. Department of Information and Publicity has said uh, to ask for citizenship every time of uh, RTI application comes. <coughs> I wrote to them, uh, file an RTI with the, uh, the Department of Information and Publicity at Panjim. Uh, 30 days have elapsed, so I filed an appeal, and yesterday was the hearing. And I told uh, the uh, director and first appellate authority, Deepak Pandekar. That uh, the only reason of me appealing, I because I did not get a response. You know, okay, we'll make uh, make the uh, available the uh, 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 circular. I call up the PIO separately. And I told him, "This is why I'm still looking for it." I said, "How can you ask your people in the affairs department to, you know, refer to it and when you can't can't produce the circular?" No. So anyway, he promised me the week or so he gave it to me. Yeah. Uh, that's it. Thank you. This is the circular Linus uh, about nationality thing, no? Yes, Indian citizenship. That's all. So actually, any yes, excuse sir. is good enough to delay or not give the information. That obviously is. it is a delay tactic, <coughs> and uh, my experience with uh, Deputy SP at Porori is uh, Edwin Kalasu writes it first time. Such a time when I apply for another uh, this, uh, somebody else replies. So every time when you uh, Deputy SP is to reply. Okay, because Edwin knows that I am I am an Indian citizen. I have proved my citizenship. Huh? Followed. Right, right, That's right. It. Okay, the other experience has been good, uh, or rather very good. I should share it later on. Then, you know, uh, is that okay with Venkat, or you wanted to do it right now? The good ex- good experiences. We'll keep for later. We'll no, keep for. We'll yeah, keep yeah, for another it. round so that more yeah, more voices yeah. come in, no? Fred, may I just raise a question? That's why I have my please, 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 please. Uh, how do we do it? You know, there are several issues which uh, we are very experienced party users and participants are raising. So, should we take them up to respond to them during the second round? Is that how you would prefer it? Uh, see, if we can, if we can just uh, put it out in the chat box, you know. 
some of them will require you know one or two minutes to explain okay so so, so, so they can raise their hand they can they can raise but they can raise their hand because uh, if it's more urgent i think like uh, you know let's go with it nothing urgent it can be yeah because i want to respond to a few of the issues that were raised but i'll wait for the second round people are feeling shy to to speak up so venkat venkat if you if you uh, answer some questions now it might also you know put set the yeah, ball bro. rolling uh, bruno bruno go go ahead go ahead bruno thank you it might stimulate the discussion yeah, bruno gomez uh, okay. bruno okay. gomez i'm based i'm nri i'm based in switzerland i'm a counselor in switzerland and i had a issue in goa because i'm still uh, uh, connected to goa um got and brought up in goa studied <coughs> in goa and uh, immigrated to switzerland i'm based in switzerland the only thing is what i want to do just to bring to your notice is that uh, i had a issue with the panchayat and due to some issue um, one of my case went to right to uh, 10 years because of the compound war and uh, unfortunately the panchayat without informing us uh, they got a order i don't know where and uh, they broke my wall and then since i was not there nobody was there they broke my wall and uh, uh, i went to the panchayat and i asked for the right to petition act i wrote to them and um, then the secretary said that he will give me the information in uh, 30 days as for the act as i read the act uh, i know a little bit of it and then finally when i went to him asking 30 days i left uh, what what you doing and he said no 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 i cannot give it to you and it was my time to come back to switzerland and then afterwards it was followed up and uh, <coughs> what the uh, uh, i took my advocate and i told him how to get this to after it and the guy uh, the advocate went to the uh, to the to the panchayat they said they cannot give it to me because i am not a citizen okay one point second point i asked my sister to write to to get the information to the uh indian citizen and she wrote to it and since i had dropped the letter from here and i told her to sign and she signed it and then they saw that there was my address was there and they said this is not the right letter so they could not give the information so i made an appeal to to the mamla the uh, who is that video i don't know what uh, that is the uh, video and from video uh, it went uh, my lawyer went and asked them what about this then the same thing the same question came is that i had to prove to them that whether i am as a indian citizen my question is uh, i am nri uh, i am a oci holder do oci do have a right to ask for the information or not yeah that's that's a very uh, important question and uh, it affects a large number of people in goa because of the diaspora from the state uh of course uh, venkat could give the right situ- uh, answer on it i think i think that uh, agusto pinto the other day also said that uh, as per the law you know you have to be an indian citizen in that sense but uh, nothing prevents anyone else from asking for the information on your behalf and we don't need to show any interest or reason for that interest for example very clearly there was this uh, finnish guy who was killed in goa young tourist in his 20s early 20s and his aunt uh, and mother were really desperate for information so they wanted to get something so i drafted and passed it on to uh, to someone or something or i submitted or something i forget what the details were but we got the information for them they got the information some one way or the other so i am thinking now what would it take to set up maybe a small help desk which 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 you know which is not a huge organization or anything of its own but a small help desk that can raise rti queries pro bono you know in in goa maybe follow it up of course it takes time and energy but uh, something like that if it could be done you know because there's a lot of pessimism about the act and how people are blocking the act and all which is also valid no doubt but we need to find solutions venkat any comments on this please yeah so uh, thank <coughs> you sir so i will just comment on the citizenship issue um Linus has already posted a, a case number of a CIC order from 2008, where the Central Information Commission has made a determination about when and how citizenship status must be ascertained by the public information officer. I hope what I am talking about, I also am familiar with one case, but I'm I don't remember the case number, so that's what I want to do. I'm not sure if you have uh, the two are the same or if. Because there have been multiple cases that have come to the CIC. 
Now, Section 3 says very clearly that only citizens are entitled to seek information. Now, this has multiple dimensions to it. There is a decision from the High Court of Punjab and Haryana from about 2012 or 2013. I can share that on the WhatsApp group later on once the webinar is over because you can't have everything at one's disposal <coughs> to be able to share on this webinar. So, I am making note of what I need to share. So, what the Punjab and Haryana High Court says is this, that there is no compulsion in the RTI Act that one RTI application must be submitted in the name and under the signature of only one person. A single RTI application can be submitted by a group of Indian citizens. There is no bar on that. So, you don't have to file 10 RTIs, but if 10 people put their names and put the signatures on a single RTI application and simply indicate who amongst the 10 of them would be responsible for paying the fees and collecting the information and that address is mentioned, it is adequate. So, filing RTIs in groups without actually having to file the same RTI multiple times is now permitted under law. That's point number one. Point number two, you can ask information on behalf of trust companies, societies, media houses or even <coughs> your own family members an advocate on behalf of his or her client that is also permissible. There are series of decisions from the Central Information Commission that hold such RTI applications as being valid. Only requirement is the applicant's name should be clearly mentioned and the applicant's signature must be there at the bottom. So, if somebody files an RTI on the letterhead of an organization but mentions his name and puts a signature that is valid, it cannot be treated as a request that is coming from uh, organization or a company or a trust and therefore they are not citizens. That is not valid. There are three of cases in there. Now we come to the issue of citizenship. In the case of the National Human Rights Commission where the public information officer demanded to see the citizenship status of the applicant and therefore that became the basis for not processing the application uh, further and it was even rejected I think. Central Information Commission laid down a very important uh, principle that for the public information officer to doubt the citizenship status of an applicant, there must be some material basis in front of him or her to doubt the citizenship. If that is not there, then simply on the basis of uh, the person's name or uh, just of him, the public information officer cannot demand proof of citizenship. Now, this is applicable across central government. Many of the states also continue to apply this. <coughs> However, there are some states like Sikkim or there might be institutions, uh, some specific institutions <coughs> in some of the other states <coughs> where they demand proof, like Odisha for example, they don't demand citizenship proof, they demand identity proof it is written in their room. Thankfully, Goa has none of that. But Goa, there will be one serious problem. And I am sure that this is particularly raised against people who have what looks like non-Hindu sounding names. And that is an extremely unfortunate practice. That cannot be the basis for discriminating anybody from seeking information simply because somebody is, you know, got a name like, you know, Frederick Nolona or Gomez, uh, you know, Bruno. That is not the basis. There must be some material for doubting the citizenship state, something concrete that the CIO must know outside of the RTI application. Only then can they insist on citizenship proof production. If they don't, uh, you know, respond to your RTI, and you are a bona fide citizen of the country, then you can challenge this to appeal or even to a direct complaint to the uh, State Information Commission, irrespective of what the Supreme Court said in the Manipur uh, you know, case. We will talk about that later. Now, as far as OCIP, then this is my last point. OCI, to my understanding, I did some research on this long back. Um, I'm not too sure if OCI is something that continues because I remember reading a uh, government document which says that OCI is no longer a valid category, but if they continue to use it. OCI, the understanding is that they are people who are of Indian origin, but they are not uh, uh, Indian citizens per se because they have either given up or their citizenship, uh, citizenship status is now linked with some other country. India does not allow multi dual citizenship, to the best of my knowledge, but at the same time, Goa has a peculiar situation which I am not very familiar with, so I will not comment on that. But generally speaking, if you are an Indian citizen based in India, irrespective of what your name is, if you are an Indian citizen who is based outside the territory of India, you can still file RTIs in your name. The only difficulty will be for central government because there are RTI online, there is an RTI online portal and it does not matter whether you mention your address outside of the country, they will have to still give you information electronically or give you a response. 
But if you are filing against the state governments, where your address is based abroad, and uh, you <coughs> get information from India, it does create a bit of a problem. So then, the best thing to do, rather than get defeated by these technical and idiotic, you know, uh, uh, actions of PIOs to frustrate you from seeking information, just ask somebody who has got an address in India who you trust to make that RTI application for you. Like I said, you can ask information on anybody's behalf. You don't even need to submit an authorization letter. So therefore, please use these tactics to overcome these uh, strategies put in place by public information officers to frustrate you from seeking information. So that is what I wanted to say on this particular topic. I'll stop here. Venkat, if, if I could just add on this issue of RTI, of, of OCI, you know. See, it's a, it seems to be an important issue which will come up again and again. So, we maybe need to take a short term and a long term perspective. The short term being that uh, you are someone locally to do it. We work out some system that, you know, if we have some solidarity or some network or something that could be done. But the long term strategy is this. I am not a lawyer. I do not understand this well enough. But our, uh, OCI has always been defined in terms of what you cannot do. Okay. In the past, of course, there is that debate about whether OCI continues or not, all those things are there. But in the past, what we were told about OCI is that you cannot stand for elections. You are as good as an Indian citizen. You cannot stand for elections. You cannot, you cannot hold agricultural land. Okay. So, if it is defined by what you cannot do rather than what you can do, where does RTI stand as far as OCI goes? That may, need, may call for some clarification. Anyway, that is a long term issue. But if someone else wants to hop in here and introduce themselves. I see Rui Ferreira also here. Thank you for coming. And Anjali is there. And Ernest and a few others. Please, we are giving two minutes time just to have initial statements. Then we will go in for wider discussions. Just tell us uh, if you can, what are the issues you are facing, where you think there is hope, where you think uh, people are blocking their act and what we could do as a group. Please, anyone, raise your hand and just go for it. <coughs> While we are waiting, this is Karan again. Uh, yes. Could I just ask Venkat a couple of clarifications? questions on this uh, OCI uh, and citizenship issue. Uh, number one is just a point I'd like to make, uh, which I think, uh, Frederick, you, you alluded to. Uh, OCI actually stands for Overseas Citizen of India. Now, if it stands for Overseas Citizen of India, and any citizen of India is allowed to, uh, <coughs> to apply, then, you know, I guess it is questionable whether, you know, you should be given that information, I would have thought. But that, that's just a you know, side, side issue. The other thing I wanted to ask was, uh, you said that um, under the law, uh, it appears as though they are not entitled, PIOs are not entitled to ask you to prove your citizenship unless there is a kind of, I think you mentioned a material basis for doubt. Uh, could you give some, you, you did say what, you know, the name should not be a material basis for doubt, but could you give some examples of what would prove to be a material basis for doubt? That would be very helpful. And then the other thing that I just wanted to ask is, is this business of having citizenship as a criteria not actually bad in law, considering that there, that there isn't, that, that there must be literally tens if not hundreds of millions of people in India who do not have any document which would prove citizenship. <coughs> and in the only two documents that I can think of that would prove citizenship would be number one, a passport. And I know that there literally are hundreds of millions of Indians who don't have a passport. And then number two would be a voter ID card. Uh, and that too, uh, there must be literally tens of millions of people, certainly anyone below the age of 18 who is a citizen of India would not have a voter ID card. So then how would you prove citizenship when, when there is no such documentation that can be used for proving citizenship? Hmm. Right, may I respond? Yeah, yeah, please, please, please. Please, go oh, ahead. Please. Okay, so there's very bad. Valid point that you've raised, sir. Uh, let me start with the last point. In fact, uh, since I was closely involved in the advocacy process when the bill was drafted and was being considered in Parliament, we actually made a very detailed submission on this issue. Two things we said. So look, how does it matter whether you restrict access rights to citizens? Because if anybody, including a citizen of India, asks for information that is legitimately exempt under Section 8, 9 or 24 of the RTI Act, even citizens won't get it. Why? Foreigners won't get it, obviously. And if there is information that a citizen can get, 
What is the harm of in allowing access to that information? So long as it is not some third party <coughs> information, why can it be allowed to a non-citizen also? And then the last point that we argued was that look, when you put up section 4 disclosure on your website or you print it in the form of manual, where is your guarantee to ensure that it will be accessed only by citizens of India? Anybody can access it. Somebody can sit in the corner of Timbuktu, open our government of India website, and access all the information that is uploaded there which is not password protected or which does not require a login ID. So we made all these arguments. But then Parliament, particularly the committee, the standing committee, because <coughs> I am privy to some of the discussions, <coughs> that's why I am explaining to you what was their logic. The logic that they made was that the very first judgment on the right to know, which is State of Uttar Pradesh versus Narayan, and then S.P. Gupta versus the uh, President of India, and a series of other. Ex, uh, 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 which the Supreme Court pronounced recognizing the right to know, they were all deemed to be fundamental rights within the meaning and scope of Article 19.1a that guarantees the right to freedom of speech and expression. And therefore, the BOPC stand before the Parliamentary Committee was that Article 19 rights are available only to citizens, and therefore this must be restricted only to citizens. We argued in counter to that, and we said that look. The right to know is not just linked with Article 19. There are at least two very important Supreme Court judgments where the right to know is connected with Article 21, which is the right to life and liberty. Mm -hmm. And the right to life and liberty is guaranteed by the Constitution to any person who comes within the jurisdiction of India, territorially or administratively. And therefore, there is no reason why RTI should be limited only to citizens. But at that point of time, the Parliamentary Committee even though it was dominated by the UPA people at that point of time, they did not want to go the extreme step like many European countries or American or America or uh, several other Latin American countries do by opening up rights of access to citizens or to non-citizens. And that is where they decided the matter. I say for the time being, we will just leave it as far as citizens are concerned with access rights. Other things we can see much later on. Let us first test the law and how it applies. That's number one. Now when I look at the definition, of OCI, as given on the Bureau of Immigration website of the Government of India, there are several categories where the person who is an OCI, recognized as an OCI, is actually not a citizen of India. And that's the reason why they get deprived. So if you want to take up the advocacy issue and on the longer term, you can make it an election issue in the next elections in Goa. So please demand transparency, uh, sorry, uh, please demand access rights under the RTA Act, particularly with focus on Goa saying that, look, there are these problems that we are facing, so why don't you bring in a clear rule which says that the drones should be allowed to access right information at centrally uh, and there should be no you know, problems created within the scope of Section 3. Longer term, you can say, get rid of Section 3 entirely and say, any person may access these rights, but that will be a longer battle to fight. Like I put in the chat box, and this is my last point. If you want clarity on whether an OCI category person can or cannot access information, the right thing to do would be, and I'm sure somebody might have already thought of this, but it is, there's no harm in repeating it, you can file an RTI application with the Department of Personal and Training in the Government of India to get their understanding of whether OCI is covered by the RTI Act or not. And I can help doing the, uh, to do that draft so after this webinar is over, maybe over a couple of days. That's all I want to do. Um, I, I think I have responded to most of the issues that the previous speaker has raised. I'll stop. Very interesting, very interesting and very detailed uh, reply, Venkat, as always. Uh, of course, there is a short term and a long term uh, issue involved here. As you are saying, the long term issue also needs to be tackled, the short term issue we will. Anyone else wanting to introduce or if, if we are not forcing anyone to speak here, if you are not comfortable in speaking or you want to speak later, that is certainly fine. If, if, if no one else wants their two minutes, then we go in for Q&A. And we request you to keep the <coughs> questions short. The answers may or may not be short depending on the person's ex answering them. Rui, Anjali, yeah. people I know. Yeah, my, may I interrupt? Yes, yes, Linus, your hand is raised, please. Yeah. Yes, uh, the experience I have had with Goa only is when you ask the information, they say when you are collecting it, please produce your I, I card. Okay. I, what I do is ask them to send by post, no I card, no identity is asked. But if you are coming in person, you bring your I card along and start taking. Otherwise, they are not going to give you the document. And this is whether it is 
with electricity department, PWD, uh, you know, uh, the municipal corporation, or uh, any other other place. <coughs> okay, that's it. Thank you. Fair, fair enough. No, that's fair enough. Not on uh, Linus. So I prefer to send it by post, and I yeah. get it, and it's okay. Good enough. Yeah. Thank you. Someone wants to speak. Someone wants to ask questions. Please. I just wanted to ask a couple of questions. Yeah, ask, ask. I Anjali, ask, please. Yeah. Uh, the reason I asked about ID even by post is that if the ID is there, then the citizenship is is clear on on that whether it's voter's ID or whatever. So if you uh, just post it along with it. The second question I wanted to ask what Venkatesh said about. Uh, group rti is that is interesting so for example now uh, in terms of uh, covid i i haven't done any rtis and i've just, just been uh, sort of aware of rtis and following what happens with rtis or rti activists that sort uh, so in in this uh, uh, like in covid covid preparedness uh, uh, can RTI group RTI be done on that? That you know, where are the hospitals? How many beds? How, how many? Uh, where are the oxygen? Uh, this thing, uh, uh, provision being done. What is the protocol? Those kinds of questions can be asked in uh, RTI as a group. Yes, the short point is yes. People can ask. See the group or not group has nothing to do with the with the with the content of the query, I guess, no? So if someone wants to reject you, whether it's group or individual, they will reject and if they want to accept, they would accept. But the interesting thing is that you can do it in a group. Another question related to the group Venkat is can some of the groups be a citizen and some not, then what happens? It gets rejected or what? No, it does create a problem. But you see RTI is finding in solidarity. My own experience has been that it actually works like one, you know, from the record. When they see multiple names, one address, they know that this is an a mobilized group. Does not have to be backed up by a formal registered organization, society or trust. This just the fact there are 10 people asking this information, they cannot play the same kind of game because you see what is happening. When you sign the RT application as a known individual, one to one relationship with the PIA. The moment you <coughs> have more than one person, the PI is always in the minority. So therefore, you are in a much stronger position when you file RTI in a group. That's why we recommend that these RTIs be filed in a group. Before the Punjab Haryana High Court decision came in, what did we do? Whenever we learned that a friend or an RTI activist who didn't even know was being threatened or had a specific information, we would ask for a corporate RTI application and we would find the same thing from our address. I have done that with people who are threatened in Assam. I have done that with people who have been threatened in Karnataka. And what would happen as a result of our RTIs is, if they are asking the same information, they would send us a fee request, but they would end up giving the information to the local applicant without any charge because they are delayed. They are gone the <coughs> so let us try this RTI filing in solidarity. What happens if somebody is not a citizen? Then the person has to, you know, like I put in a chat box. It's not if you could just show one identity proof the copy, no? How do you know it is genuine? Public information officer was actually you know, taken to court for simply accepting that the ID proof was genuine without verifying it with the issuing authority. So there is no end to it. We should point out all of these problems in an advocacy document and say that look, this artificial divide between citizens and non-citizens must be ended. Work on the long-term solution. Say that access to information under the RTI law is and should be available to anybody and everybody. The exemptions are more than enough to take care of things uh, which are sensitive so that they don't fall in the hands of non-citizens because as it is, they are not going to be allowed access to citizens. So what is the harm? Yeah, very interesting, very interesting. Particularly this uh, group filing and solidarity filing is a, uh, I never thought of it that way, I must say. Questions, uh, questions, yeah, yeah questions uh, please. Karan, Karan, yeah. Karan again. Yeah. Uh, I, I just want to ask a quick question on that. Um, <coughs> yeah, first of all, just an observation, I guess, about the group filing. I have done group filing once and, and I completely agree with that statement that it, it kind of puts the PIO and the legal position but on the back foot. And yeah, it's just it's to do with strength in numbers and uh, the fact that, you know, uh, if he's, you know, one person is much easier than if he was trying to have the same people. Um, I, I also completely agree with the, the concept that, that it's a bit of a nonsense to deny it non-citizen. Uh, also very interested to hear that there are many countries where uh, you have similar laws uh, and it is open to foreigners to use them as well. Um, 
just in terms of the practicality of this business of collecting the information when it is deemed to be ready, uh, I think I mentioned this on the WhatsApp group as well. I, I have had one situation where I had applied for some information. It didn't come within the 30 days. And when I went back after the 30 days, I was told by the, uh, the PIO that it's been waiting for you here, right? Um, now, now, is there anything in the Act? I don't believe there is anything in the Act, but I might have missed it. Is there anything in the Act which says that once the person has compiled the information, that he's got the information together, it's his job to inform the applicant that it is there and either available for collection or that he will post it. Uh, and is there a protocol when, when we are dealing with non-online applications, like at the state level in, in Goa, for example, that that it must be posted if it isn't collected within the 30 days? Or you know, is there is there any sort of protocol that, that must be followed by the PIO if he genuinely does have the information ready in 30 days, and uh, and you know, uh, it has not been communicated yet to the the applicant. Uh, and the second is when it is done by post. It's I've never had the experience of having anything sent to me by post, but when it is done by post, what is the procedure then for making the payment based on the number of photocopies? Do you make the payment after you receive it, or is he supposed to send you a letter saying, right, I've got it ready, uh, the <coughs> pages, that, that equates to whatever, 20 rupees, you then send across the 20 rupees by post, once he gets the 20 rupees, then he sends it across to you, and do you also have to pay for his postage? I mean, these are all minor points, but I'm very interested in how the mechanics work. Karan, Karan, if I could just interrupt, uh, I am not the expert here, but still my experience is this. Uh, the first part of the transaction makes sense to do by post, where you send in the application via the post office or whatever. Even post office is ex uh, accepted, I think they are still doing, I am not very sure. They used to accept it for even no postal rates, 10 rupees and that is it. So the first part you use the post and the second part it becomes too much of kit pit and trouble. So that is where you could actually go in person to pick it up. no? Anyway, one so you have to keep going every five days, every ten days, or at the end of thirty days, or what? They are supposed to inform you. In uh, you know, you're you're giving one side of the story. The other side of the story is mine. I went after three or four months, you know, to pick up some information, and they were good enough to give it to me. And they were flustered, saying that after how long have you come? And they had actually told me come and pick it up, but I just didn't have the time. After how long are you coming? And they realized and I realized that there was nothing in the law that said that you have to keep it for, you have to pick it up within a certain number of days or something. Maybe Venkat could clarify on this situation. Yeah, let me explain this. Uh, what I would like to request <coughs> everybody here, since uh, uh, you know you are all, uh, you have experience of using the right to information uh, and uh, you know you start information or you have explained it, I would urge you to do two things. One is, please always keep on your mobile phone or on your laptop a copy of the RTI Act and your applicable central RTI rules and the Govan RTI rules ready for you know, quick reference. It really helps to keep reading these uh, laws and rules frequently. I've also posted uh, the link to our RTI user guide in English so that you can download it for free and make use of it. The step by step process of receiving information including filing appeals and complaints are explained in this user guide. It's a 2018 version. It does not have the 2019 amendments made to the Act and the rules because they came much later. But if you want the amendments that have been made, I can say share them also. Now to respond to your query. You see, what is the scheme of the RTA? You file an RTA application under Section 61. Then the public information officer has to make a determination of the first thing that he has to determine is this whether he or she holds the information in their office or whether that information that you are asking is completely connected to the working of that office or it is more closely connected to the working of some other office. If the latter is the case, <coughs> more closely connected to the working of some other office, even though you, that office may have it, or if they don't have it at all, but some other office has it, they have to transfer that RTA application within some time. So that is the first determination that you have to make. The second determination, once the PIO uh, no, uh, realizes that yes, a, information is available in that office, and B, it relates too closely to the working of that office. Then they have to take a call on whether to disclose the information or not. Under Section 71, the time limit for making this second stage decision is 30 days, ordinarily. In urgent matters relating to people's life and liberty, it is 40 days. We will not get into that right now. So once the person makes a determination that this information is 
Speed may die, but it comes at the new big bang speed. Within those early periods, that person has a new rejection free of cost. They can't charge you for that. But if the CIO makes the determination that no exemptions are applicable, this is making a quick code exchange. They have to first indicate to you the total number of pages that will have to be for the copy and given to you. They will have to apply the fee rates applicable in your state. Mostly, most of the states it is fee. In one or two states, it is more than fee. They have to give you the rules calculation. Fee rules will indicate what is the mode of fee payment, and you have to make the fee payment once you receive the fee information letter. It has to be in writing. Sometimes they call you up on the phone also. You can go and make the payment, but always insist on the fee information letter to be given to you, either by post or by uh, you know uh, you will collect it by hand. Always make sure that in your RTI application. Even though the Act does not say it, the rules don't say it anywhere. It's clear and plain common sense. You know, laws cannot provide for all situations. They will provide only the overall schema of what the law intends to do and expects the duty holders to do and what the rights of the you know the rights there are. Well. So therefore, everything is not provided for it. You know. So when you file the RTI application, you please indicate whether you want the information by post or whether you will go and collect it in person. Or whether you want the information to be sent to you electronically, which means that they should hold the information in their custody electronically. They don't have a duty to convert a paper-based file into an electronic form and send it to you in such a way that you will be able to pay. So that will come under Section 79. We can discuss that a little later. What is the scope and limit of 79? Anyway, so that fee information letter has to come to you. Then you make the fee payment. Now the time limit between the sending of the fee information letter and you actually making the fee payment. Is not included in the 30-day period. Why? Because if you feel that you are being charged exorbitant fees, then you have a right to seek review in the, before the appellate authority. If the appellate authority wants to agree to the PIO, you can escalate the matter to the commission also. That is the combined reading of section 71, 73, and section 191 and 193 of the RTI. So until the entire process is over, your RTI application will still stay <coughs> alive. <coughs> 30-day period does not get over, but the moment you pay your fees, the remainder of the 30-day period will stay. So within the rest of that day, you know period or whatever remains in the 30-day period, they have to give you the information. So always specify in what mode you want to access. You will go and collect in person, or you want it by post. I have, except when I seek inspection of records, I have always sought information by post. Or these days, especially after COVID, I tell them. The information that I am asking you is to be disclosed under Section 41B, and I make out a case, and I say put this on your website. Send me the URL. In some cases, they put it on the website. In most other cases, they actually send it to me electronically, or they send it by post. Very often, it is free of charge because I am told it is 41B. This works with central government. It may not work with the state governments, where the rule of law is not yet a very entrenched value. To the extent that it is entrenched with central government, even in central government, there is a problem. But let's leave that aside. So, except at the time of inspection, when you go and uh, seek inspection of records, uh, you can actually ask for information to be sent to you by post. Now, my last point: when you ask for inspection, what very often happens is this. This happens in central government. This happens in state government. They will allow you inspection, and then they will say, "Okay, matter closed. Tata, bye bye." So, what you have to do is this: when you ask for inspection, like many of our friends do in Maharashtra, they have perfected this art. They say, "I want to inspect the files relating to A, B, C, D, E." And during the inspection, I will identify specific pages contained in that particular file. Please make arrangements to give me photocopies or certified copies. Both are permissible under Section 2J of the RTI Act. You specify that in your RTI application. It means that you don't have to file two RTI applications: first for inspection and then to get copies. <coughs> so please be clear on that. Put it that put it that way. They cannot charge you 10 rupees extra when you ask for two forms of access. You will only be charged for the inspection period. Generally, first hour is free. After that, depending upon the state rules, it is either five rupees for every subsequent 15 minutes, or it is five rupees for every subsequent hour. And then they can charge you only at the rate of two rupees per page for the photocopies that you want. The certified copies also will be charged only at two rupees per page. There is a DOPT circular which says very clearly that the certified copy right to of access given in RTI Act is of a different category. As compared to the Indian Evidence Act, and uh, I think Section 74, which says certified copy of 72, I can't remember. I'm not a lawyer. Somewhere in 72, 74. So there, that is a completely different process. Civil Procedure Code access to certified copies is a completely different process. It's got nothing to do with RTI Act. 
Under the RTA, the, the UPT circular, which says, this is how you certify a copy of the document and you give it to the applicant. Who should certify? Documents of manageable size. <coughs> Who should certify copies of documents of large size is also mentioned in the BSC order. I can share that with you later on. I uh, you know by email I could probably send it to Chris and then he can share it with everybody. So please be informed of the multiple guidelines, the, the what is required in the law itself to uh, you know to be very clear and then file your RTA. Don't start looking at the RTA after the, the, uh, the dash has hit the fan or if you know if you are facing challenges or you have come up with obstruction, first equip yourself because you are all people who know uh, the RTI Act uh, exists in writing. You can read it, you can you know, understand it much better than the person who is unlettered. So equip yourself first with the knowledge and then go ahead and find the right. This is what I want to say. Very interesting, very Thank interesting. You. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Carry on. I was just going to say thank you very much. Very interesting inputs because, uh, you know, these small procedural things make a big difference. Whether you go once for inspection and then for uh, another round for getting the copies. It's not so much the money, the 10 rupees, but a waste of time and even, uh, you know, the more time you take, the greater chance of uh, the process getting interrupted. Rui and company, some substantial issues because uh, while procedure is also important, we need to be looking at, uh, you know, wider issues that can make a real difference. Any Anyone had major problems or any points where you particularly get stuck? I find that the panchayats in Goa take it quite lackadaisically, you know, they're just not bothered. You ask them for copies of minutes of the meetings, they'll send you something. They may not respond in the first place. If they respond, it will be badly handwritten. You can hardly read what they're saying. And, you know, so they are subverting the law in spirit, if not in letter. Uh, can I, can please, I please, something? Avinash, please. Yeah, so uh, in my experience, there has been, uh, you know, the, different kind of uh, response letters that I get. Uh, one type would be if I ask questions. Uh, what we expect is uh, a point by point reply, uh, as well as uh, if in a reply, how much money would I have to pay, and then the total amount written below. Sometimes they just say, This is the amount, please come and pay and uh, take that uh, document. You don't know how many pages you're getting, you don't know what you're getting, in fact. And sometimes they just say, Your reply is ready, please come and uh, they think they don't mention the amount. So it depends a lot on the PIO uh, or the APIO that is uh, going to give you the information. Now the worst case scenario when you ask point by point uh, question, when they say, uh, please come and uh, inspect the files, you are not asked for inspection, but they just don't want to give you a point by suppose like in the panchayat you ask for a sanat copy of a construction, a construction plan, a construction this. They say your file is ready, kindly come and inspect and collect the document. It's literally just in one line they say. It. So, uh, so a lot depends on that and uh, I guess that's something about experience on how you go about it, whether you by filing the RTI, make it very clear that PIO, what do you want? Uh, or you just have to, you know, uh, wait till the reply and when once you go there, you'll figure out uh, what kind of reply they're giving you. Uh, the other issue which I face with the collector, uh, collector building is that they have, they are using that, you know, uh, different rates of 50 rupees for a document, even though they're not issuing you a, a fresh order, but they are, they are charging you, uh, you know, the prices uh, which are in the prescribed rates even though they are just ordinary correspondence of notices and all that stuff. So by the time you fight it, it kind of tires you out, especially when you are in a hurry for that information. So uh, this is like, I got, a, I got a reply saying that they come and pay 350 rupees. And when I went there, just like seven pages. And it was just some uh, notices sent to the complainant and all that uh, kind of documentation. So that's, that's uh, how <coughs> they kind of play those games. But uh, uh, one of the things which uh, helps is uh, a good relation with the postman because, uh, you know, it, 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 the th they send the reply exactly on the 20, 28th day. They post it on the 28th day, which reaches you on the 30th day. So uh, many post offices don't hit the stamp very clearly. And uh, if they do, uh, then you get to... Uh, you know, if, if they cross 30 days, if, the, if you receive, if the stamp is on the 31st day, then it's easy to claim, uh, you know, <coughs> free of cost uh, RTI, uh, rather than exactly. <coughs> so, these are like the small things that kind of, uh, uh, once you are in it, well, you can make a difference when it comes to uh, filing RTIs. But yeah, make it very clear with the PIO in the beginning itself, what you are expecting. 
and ask them to send you the cover letter with the costing of the individual documents. That's something I do. Rather than just file the RTI and come out, I say this, this is what I want. And uh, yeah, uh, please uh, send me the point by point reply when you say because that that doesn't cost. That is just the the post that they give. Yeah. That's that's about the funniest thing I've heard today. That a good relationship with with your postman really helps, and uh, it comes from a lot of experience because uh, you know understanding these small nitty gritties and even getting your stamp, uh, postal stamp correct, uh, can make a big difference in getting the information free, or uh, what yeah, Avinash think, mentioned what, about about asking what asking properly. Uh, yeah. what, ha- what happens is if you if you write up uh, you know uh, a letter to say the PWD the center office or the Power Department is Central Office. They send uh, letters to every division and subdivision. So the postman is the guy who has to come on your door every second day, you know, and deliver one one just to you, saying that okay, this letter is coming from Ponda, from Panjim, from all the other places. So yeah, you need to have a good relation with the postman, guys. Uh, That's correct. That's correct. That's correct. Uh, you know, since you raised this point about uh, the government departments cha- making us chase information across the state, once I got this reply. Uh, it was just trying to collate information about uh, RTIs a- asked under the Goa Act within Goa itself, and uh, they told me that we have 140 or whatever departments. Uh, you can please go and ask them at that level. So at that stage, this MK Joss was active, and he was quite a acerbic uh, letter writer. So I asked him for advice. So he wrote uh, he wrote a, a reply which which I processed in my name, and his first line I still remember it till date. It said. Uh, you are. T- uh, it was addressed to the information director, who was my friend. He said, uh, "You are trying to tire me out financially and physically by sending me to all these departments." And uh, it was a strong worded reply. So the guys read it and they actually collated the information and they gave it to me. And after they gave it to me, this was the Goa Act. They said, "Thank you so much for asking this because when uh, Arun Churi, that time Minister for Administrative Reforms or something, came down, he wanted to understand the Goa Act and." Just because of this RTI, they had all the information about what were the RTIs being asked, and they could uh, offer it to them. But uh, as you are saying, uh, you know, all these tricks really tire you out in that sense. So they are sending you to the different departments. You have to make the payments, the ten rupees, fifteen rupees. That's not the point. But making the payments is an issue. Sorry, sorry, Rui, Rui, I'm waiting for Rui to speak up. He's being very silent. <coughs> or anyone else? Karan, Karan is. Uh, yeah, I just please, sorry, please. I seem to be speaking a lot. Please. Um, but one more question that just comes to my mind. Um, uh, this is in relation to inspection of file. When you have requested to inspect file. Uh, now, I haven't done it myself, but I uh, probably uh, will at some point. Um, my question is, is, is there some way you should word your RTI application letter to ensure or to at least reduce the chances that that the files that you are shown uh, are complete. So what I'm thinking of, for example, is uh, is a situation where let's say you have filed a complaint against some uh, unlawful construction, and you want to look at all the files that relate to the action they have taken following receipt of your complaint. Now, what is to stop them? from showing you one file which is showing one action that they have taken and not five other files which they've got hidden somewhere and they say look we showed you the file so is there some way to word your letter to make sure that you get shown all the files no exactly we have no thing what all the files are exactly as you said it no Karan you say that I want to uh, inspect all these files related to such and such case all related they files could, all related files they, they could still just show you <coughs> one file and you would not you'd be none the wiser right when you say when you when you sure. say when you say all related, they are supposed to to uh, to you know put it up front because tomorrow if you find some other file which was not shown, Venkat, something on this. Uh, I just want to respond to that. You see, <coughs> uh, there's very little that you can do in your RTI application above and beyond what's called as suggested. However, please remember uh, the other thing. I'm sorry. Now I'm going to. And I'll show you uh, wisdom of uh, something that is based on a thing in my uh, native language of Kannada. It's there in uh, Tamil as well. The other thing which is that you know that uh, how do you outsmart somebody who is very clever, particularly clever by heart? So if they are clever enough 
to to uh, let's say uh, crawl under a straw mat you counter them by developing the wisdom to crawl under what is called rangoli or kolam you know that white powder that you use to make designs in front of the houses uh, the front yard of you know hindu family right so we call it rangoli in kannada or we call it kolam in uh, tamil so there is hardly any space between the ground and that powder which lies on it so you've got to be clever enough to uh, crawl right under that so what you need to do is you need to actually also equip yourself with some basic understanding of office procedures adopted across your state government now there is something called a common office procedure manual that gives a clear list of procedures that every government agency must adopt for opening files on any topic so you must first familiarize yourself with that before i filed rti because most of my rti's are filed in central government i read up what is called the central secretariat manual of office procedure which is publicly available on the website of the department of administrative reforms and uh, public grievances state government office manuals are not easily available on the website they should be but <coughs> they are not but generally they are available in good law book stores or you simply write to the department that is responsible for general administration or personal and administration and ask for a copy of the office manual that will tell you how files must be open numbered interconnected etc etc so generally the understanding is this mainly starting with the central government down to many state governments they are adopting what is called a single file system i'm not sure whether goa has yet started adopting the single file system method the idea in the single file system is that there should not be multiple files on a single subject matter even though multiple departments or ministries might be involved in the decision making process and the consultation process even the absence of a single file system very often when you send complaint to a department or agency only one file is open on that is it it might run into multiple volumes if it is a complex matter that's different but you will not have 15 different files open just on the basis of your complaint but if there are 15 different complaints chances are there might be 15 different files or they might all be clubbed into one file so therefore asking for uh, all the files is important number one then how do you identify whether there are multiple files uh, on this issue or not if the office is following good practice of office administration every file that is connected to another file both should mention each other's file number that is an example of good practice in record management according to the record management rules adopted by government if they don't mention it is bad practice i don't know how to give you a solution for that problem but generally connecting file the file number and the subject matter must be mentioned on the main file and also on the subsequent file now if there is a single file that is not open but is running into multiple volumes then the volume should also mention volume 1 volume 2 volume 3 how do i know this not just the mop which i read but when i do file inspections i also come across this kind of practice in central government but i'm sorry i cannot say that it might apply to state government as well you will have to see what is the pro- uh, process what is the practice in goa generally to understand is the basic principles of file management record management are reasonably uniform across the country there might be minor changes here and there but it's not too revolutionary you know it's not a revolutionary change between governments that's all the last point i want to make every file will have two parts on the left hand side of the file <coughs> will be the file notes on the right hand side will be the correspondence they have to be numbered separately central government follows this practice very strictly unfortunately in many state governments they are mixed up file notes are written on the corresponding sheets themselves okay so that is a bit of a problem however the basic rule either way whether you do it in two parts or you just do a jumble up because the fellow is too lazy or simply nobody has trained him in how to do file management to have to number every single thing okay and then that will give you a uh, clarity on whether pages are missing in between second thing is now in file there are two categories category number 1 is something called a recorded file what does it mean it means 
that the file that has been opened on that subject matter <coughs> has served its purpose, the scene has been taken, it's been implemented, the government agency no longer has any use for that file, so what they do is they record it, it means they switch it up and send it to the record view. That is the recorded file. The second category of files is something called a live file. It means the decision making process or the implementation of that decision is still continuing and that file will still be available on somebody's desk in that particular government office. It's not sent to the record view. Record and ideally speaking, under section 41A of the RPI Act, all these details about recorded files, about live files, they must be publicly proactively disclosed by the public authority concerned. It is 41A, read with two provisions in 41B. I can't remember the exact uh, subclause number now. But one says, uh, directory of all the files that they hold in their custody in paper form, and then details of all the files that they hold in electronic form in their custody. All this information must be made publicly available. Why? So that there is certainty about the kinds of files and the kinds of subject matter on which files are opened and saved by every uh, record creating agency. Unfortunately, this practice, even commissions ignore, they keep making recommendations that nobody takes it seriously. As a result of which, you have problems like missing files, disappeared files, files that went missing in floods, even though the entire city was under, or the entire region was under a drought for the last 10 years, <laughs> or files destroyed in fire, even though nobody even you know, lit a cigarette in that building for the last 10 years, all kinds of excuses are given. There is a very strongly developed case law in Delhi and in uh, Maharashtra, the Delhi High Court and Bombay High Court, about what people's rights are. Requesters' rights are when a government agency claims that the file has gone missing. So we can take the topic up if somebody is interested later on. Otherwise, I'll be speaking for too long. I'll stop. Thank you. Very, very, very helpful. Yeah. Very informative. Very informative. And there's a lot of science to it. Uh, we only understand it when we encounter it. Uh, apart from the corruption thing, I think efficiency in government in governance is also something that, uh, although it's a distant dream and we have lots of problems, I'm not saying it's so easy to attain, but RTI can maybe take us on this road. Avinash, you want to say something? <coughs> there is time for everyone, please. The faster you step in, the better, because towards the end, we'll be running short of time. So now there is time. You want to raise some, some pressing issues, please feel free to problem areas whatever plans for a for a centralized database i think that is critical no having having the information out there is going to be critical because if we uh, know what others are filing from for what information they are getting it could spur off it could trigger off many more effective rtis because as of now you know we are going by hearsay we need to see we need to we, we need to be doubting thomases and see the proof there Rui, tell us something a little bit about your experiences with RTIs. Rui Ferreira. No. Okay, if, if, if there are no questions, then uh, maybe we could look at this RTI portal, how it could, uh, you know, how it could help us, how practical it is to do, how difficult it is. Any comments? See, uh, if you Google search RTI uh, Goa, there is already an RTI portal for the internal uh, use, for the government internal use. There are some login thing and all you get. Uh, I think they, it's a common platform all over the country, which they're not giving access to for uh, Goa in terms of uh, for the applicant. So it just needs a demand actually from the with the government, governor, or the government, to get it implemented, and maybe we can link it to human rights also because a lot of people who have uh, uh, who have uh, disabilities cannot access, cannot physically go there. So maybe it can be linked to that as well. No, no, that is correct, Avinash. What you are saying there is correct. I have also seen if you go Google for Goa and RTI, you get that. You get those two places, uh, two uh, links, and one is a portal. But what portal is that? Is it a portal giving data of information asked, information received, or or questions processed, or what exactly is going on there? Because I don't know. You know, we'll have to. It's, 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 it's,
ओके बट आई डोंट थिंक दे वुड बी ट्रैकिंग सी बिकॉज द गवर्नमेंट इज नॉट बॉर्डर्ड अबाउट ट्रैकिंग यू नो से द ओवरऑल पिक्चर दैट्स आर कंसर्न नो हु इज रेजिंग द क्वेश्चन हाउ इफेक्टिव आर दे वेर आर दे गेटिंग ब्लॉक्ड what is the potential to to get information which is useful for the citizen that's our our issue the government is normally not keeping track of this unless we go through to through an mla and ask a assembly question but that will be one off that will not be on an ongoing basis okay you are you are talking about uh, the rti for uh, the rti activists right not not the one which you apply for an rti right 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 so right wrong, uh, right you are talking about a portal Okay, okay. Sorry, I thought yeah. it was for someone who can apply for that. Yeah. So Malan was talking about uh, building a database of all the RTI uh, cases coming up. You know, just so that we know what is going on, we get a wider lay of the land and we can understand the situation. Otherwise, we are seeing bits and pieces of it, mainly through episodic reporting, which is not complete. Om Om has raised his hand. Om, please, yeah, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are, you are, you are. Yeah. Uh, so, as far as this online repository is concerned, I was discussing with the Manan the other day as well. You can broadly the few components which you can have is one would be what has already been discussed, like a common database of like <coughs> ask and um, like you know to which department so on and so forth. That would be one element, and then the element could be like a. Cases for you know the common issues which people face like thirty days grounds for rejection so on and so forth. Another element could be some sort of FAQ. Like I a lot of important issues were discussed today like pertaining to OCI, pertaining to time limits. A lot of these common questions which people can have, there can also be a section in the portal for that. So broadly, these are the few elements which can have. And then separately, apart from that, you can come up with some sort of mechanism to collect this information. Like uh, maybe something to make a Google form. Correct, correct, correct. Of course, of course, of course. So those who are techies among us, if you could lead this initiative, we'll be highly grateful, and it would uh, help to take things forward. It should not be too complex, not too difficult to upload. The simpler, the better. See, because even if we have just a kind of summary saying that no. Uh, all the information need not be shared there and uh, it will just become voluminous and it will become more of a maze so if we if we know that these are the activists who are working on this issue or that this uh, you know uh, concern is of relevance to some people then maybe communities of interest could be formed that side no i don't know if i'm making sense yeah i, I think you're making sense because So what we can do is in this database, whatever we're having, the we can request the people who are submitting it, information to the database, like on what you have found out. I just put in one line what is the subject matter, what you asked for. So then broadly that gives a picture of what is it I asked for. Let's say for example, I have asked for COVID preparedness of hospitals in South Goa. That becomes my subject of search. There after someone wants to know more particulars about what I have asked, but then they can get in touch with me and then. Yeah, of course, of course, that makes a lot of sense. It should just be simple enough to update so that you know it doesn't become too centralized. The more decentralized it is, the better chance of uh, it surviving. Otherwise, updating these things becomes a becomes a full time job, and no one has that kind of uh, time and energy to. The simplest uh, platform would be something like a wiki, uh, wherein uh, since uh, both of these things are related to issues, uh, so a wiki kind of platform, uh, if we uh, put it up on on host it, then uh, it's easier to manage. I feel because uh, and we can have a Google Drive or something of that sort, or even people personal Google Drive can be used to keep the documents. But the link is put on the on the wiki. So like this example of COVID. Uh, you can have a topic there, and the discussions can be you know, uh, put in, put in as depending on the information that we collect and and uh, want to share. 
Correct. And then the link can be on our Google Drive, so that uh, anyone who wants it can just click it and have access to the document. Correct. Instead of centralizing all the documents. Correct. 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 That wiki makes a lot of sense. You know, some earlier there used to be wiki dot and all, which gave free space, but I think they folded up. I don't know where, but a Facebook yeah, group. Uh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah please, 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 please. Yeah, yeah. You, you see, the idea of having RTI portals is fantastic. I um, I don't want to discourage you, but I want to talk to you about my experience of wanting to do this at the national level, starting with Delhi. We had long discussions with a very reputable organization. Uh, in the year 2009 or 2010, and then again after two or three years, once again with them, NASCOM showed a lot of interest in helping us. But you see, these things become very resource heavy. So if you can find easy ways of doing this, say, like the wiki page, the idea that has been suggested, if it's workable, please go ahead and do it. Or if you can uh, think of using Facebook as a way of putting up these documents. You know, everything need not be put on just one page. You can open multiple Facebook pages. Something on health, something on education, something on environment, something on <coughs> COVID, and then you know you give responsibilities to each of your active members to update your pages, having them to share information. That is also doable. But what I want to draw your attention to is something that the government should be doing. In 2010 and 11, we had a long process in the central government for developing guidelines for implementing Section 4. I wrote certain chapters of, uh, you know, those guidelines uh, specifically, and you know they were included without even saying the word. They were issued in two drafts. The first one was in April 2013, and the second one was in uh, November 2013. Nothing much happened afterwards. In 2016, again the same department under a different leadership constituted a committee to advise on how best to implement those guidelines. Those guidelines are also available in the public domain, but nothing much has happened. But the short point is this. In the guidelines that we put together in 2013, it has been sent to every single state to the Chief Secretary for implementation. Hardly anybody is taking it What is suggested is that, that all RTI applications and replies, including information providers, must be uploaded on the website of the public authority that responds to that RTI application eventually. Personal information can always be kept out, it can be redacted, it can be blanked out. But all the other information should be available. The main purpose is that it should be available for people, anybody in the The principle is this. Disclosure to one, disclosure to all. Therefore, people then don't have to ask for the same information again and again. Now, there is one good example. I'm not sure if you've already seen it, but perhaps those of you who are journalists and others might have seen it. BBC in the UK is covered by their Freedom of Information Act. And if you go to your website and check your menu, you will see a link which leads you to what is called BBC FOI logs, BBC Freedom of Information logs. And there when you click on it, you get a treasure trove of RTI applications that went to them and the responses that were sent to the requesters. The only thing that they removed, because they have a very strong personal data protection law and they are subject to the European Union GDPR, Global Data Protection Regulation. So they removed the personal information like the name of the requester, address of the requester, name of the PIO who responded, those things are removed, but everything else is published. So something <coughs> like that can be worked out at governmental expense. What is required is the will to do it. Money is available for doing all of this. Even if taxpayers money can't be used, there are n number of international donor agencies who are willing to support pilot projects. Start with one department, make the information available in this manner, and then scale it up. Only thing that is required is for people to work closely with government in a sustainable manner, in a perseverant manner, and get them to implement their obligations of putting all the RTI applications in the public domain along with the responses. This would be an ideal situation. Otherwise, what happens is this. There is a lot of enthusiasm in civil society to start it. But maintaining it over a period of time, ensuring that it continues, ensuring that resources are available, updating is done regularly, is the Herculean task. We are just not equipped for it, even if we are an organization. So those are some of the pitfalls that I want to uh, warn you about. But the idea is definitely very, very exciting, doable. If these databases are created, it will be of great help to anybody and everybody, including people. Yeah, that's that's very in interesting information. Uh, I was quite surprised that uh, the departments are supposed to put them up. This was news to me. I wasn't aware of that. So, that's fascinating. Uh, anyone wants to jump in, feel free to. It's It's an open house. It's brainstorming. So, there is no set agenda
some new people have joined us you all are most welcome to 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 raise to raise issues questions queries So just a question regarding uh, uh, we can talk a lot of things. What I could say is that the people who are instituting or giving the information has to be trained up on the right in profession act, and that should come from the government or whatever agency. But first is to train up the people. <coughs> the existing people or PI or whatever you call them, if they are not trained up, you will not get the right information. That is for sure. Most of the investment companies, uh, before people who are engaged in giving any uh, jobs or that, first thing what they do is they train up the people. They really give them all required information, and then only the the uh, the, the person who g does the job uh, he gives all the required information. And why it is because he is well trained up. So what I would suggest is that the people who Are giving like uh, if you go to the secretary, you are not even respected. You are not even worth a pie. They don't care. They think that they are they are the bosses. But this kind of attitude has to be changed, and this has to come from the government itself. The government has to train up these people once they join the public service, and this is what is lacking in in uh, in Goa or all over India. That's what I could say. No, no, that's right, Bruno. But <coughs> the point is, they see like uh, we, the situation here is quite different, say from Sweden, where you had. Uh, I'm just saying Sweden because they've had <coughs> right to information acts or whatever from the 1700s, and uh, uh, you know you have an active civil society there. You have a high level of literacy. You have a big, strong middle class who knows, who knows, it has an enlightened self-interest and who knows where its future lies in that sense, and it knows the price of. of uh, being lackadaisical with with the fruits of uh, you know growth and and uh, and trickling a trickle away of corruption and all these issues whereas here we are just starting with uh, with with a few years of uh, precedence to it not only that there is a strong resistance to share information i find it can be either from the officials to a certain extent and from the political class also to another extent sometimes it's just that they are overworked sometimes that they feel like who are you this attitude thing that you said no we are like we are the rulers like who are you all guys to ask so that attitude is slowly changing it's going to take a lot of time it's not you know at the most we can hope to speed in it up a little bit but uh, you know what you are addressing is truth no doubt about it but uh, how do we bell the cat that's an issue so so it's 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 going to be a strong process my only hope is that if more people do it and if if it becomes more of a done thing and if we get more ideas see because these ideas are always welcome well venkat and company have gotten even linus and all that have gotten a lot of ideas from elsewhere and we have a lot to learn from 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 the you know experiences of other states of other regions where 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 you know things are ha are happening and they are doing more effectively but but and thanks thanks the comment on this issue from guys happy with spoken and carry on carry on carry on Yeah, you see, I have had some experience of working on proactive disclosure at the Panchayat level in Gujarat. Uh, we were there uh, 2002 onwards after uh, the criminal violence happened, and when the RTI Act became operational in 2005, we did a lot of training. We actually worked with Gram Panchayat there uh, to put up information about uh, what the Panchayat do, their budget, their meetings, their committees, the schemes that are implemented to the Panchayat in the form of wall painting. Uh, we also have a film uh, about it. How we went about doing it. One is in Hindi, one is in English. We also have a template for proactively disclosing information in offline and online mode in Punjab. And that is some parts of that have been included in the November 2013 guidelines that you have issued because we are very focused on Punjab level uh, administration for a variety of things and on four issues: Narega. Food security, education, and health. They focus on not just the uh, village level administration. They also go up to the taluka or uh, city, uh, then the district and state level, <coughs> and then the proper disclosure. Now, while doing that, what we found because we read through the Gujarat Panchayat Raj Act as well, ordinarily panchayat meetings has to happen at least four times a year in Gujarat, and I believe it is quite similar in many other states. I haven't read the Goan Panchayat Raj Act, so I can't, uh, you know. Confirm whether that is the case. 
and those four dates in a year are invariably on specific dates like Gandhi Jayanti, Republic Day, Independence Day, or some such thing. Okay, so we were able to actually put up that information on the walls and say, <coughs> according to the law, these are the dates based on which regular meetings have to be held. Special meetings may be held according to procedure given in the Act itself. This was the date of the last meeting that was held, and this is the date of the next meeting that is going to be held. So it was so surprising for people when we were actually doing the painting there, they came and watched us. You know, we've got photographs, we've got videos and everything from materials. And they were saying, hey, 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 what is this? Is this our country? So the panchayat is giving us information without us actually waiting for them, uh, waiting for us to ask for it. So our whole purpose was this, that even in, because in Gujarat, the panchayat don't open every day. They open twice a week or you know, four times a week. So our uh, whole objective was that people should get at least some information even when the panchayat doors are closed because the secretary is not there to run the panchayat. So even budget information, how much funding came in, how much money was spent, and how much money remains in balance for a three-year period was put up on, not in painted form, but that was in a blackboard, and it was written up in chalk. We did something very similar with the police stations of Ahmedabad. We created a proactive disclosure document according to section 41 requirement, and we circulated it to the, DC, uh, to the commissioner of police office, who completely fell for it, because they were in this mode of uh, proactive disclosure, because you know, the present Prime Minister was in the Chief Minister of Gujarat, he was into proactive disclosure mode, of all information that was of little consequence, because section 41D is more about basic information. 41C and 41D are the consequential cases, where accountability can be fixed. It never did. They took up those uh, section 4 templates for the police station, they converted that into Gujarati, and it was circulated to 70 police stations in the Andhrabad Police Commission. So we've got those templates. If any of you are interested in coming together in Goa, use those templates, adapt it to Goa's requirement because everything that works for Gujarat may not work for Goa. So you might like to look at the English versions of these templates and then develop something for your own state. Uh, work with your uh, Pajaji Raj department or the rural development department or work with a DM who might be interested in the <laughs> No? You have only two districts, I remember. So any of those people, or you know, you talk to your local MLAs and say, with your intervention, can we in your constituency use these templates for the panchayats and for the police stations? And accordingly, you develop it for uh, Narega and other things because the guidelines are already there. So it really will help in a big way to push for transparency rather than simply talk about how nothing is working or how there are problems and then we are set up with it. So that is exactly what we did. We talked about these issues, but then we tried to find solutions. The Panchayati Raj templates were actually put together by sitting with the Gram Sabhas. We did not even talk to them about the RTI itself. We asked them, what is the information that you really want from your Panchayat? Without actually having to ask for it. They believe me, they came up with a list that actually matched clause by clause with section 41B. And then we showed them what is there in section 41B. We read out the Gujarati version and they were shocked. They said, is this uh, law applicable in our country? We had never heard of this. And that is how interest levels in the Panchayat increase, the Sarpanch thankfully was a proactive fellow. So <coughs> what we did was this. We spent from a project fund 3,000 bucks on just buying paint and hiring the painter who painted up the information in the form of templates that we had created. <coughs> After that, the State Information Commission, Chief Information Commissioner was so proactive, he came to inaugurate this pilot project after it was all done up. And then in every hearing, he would tell the DMs and the ADMs who came to the hearing, saying that go to this village, take a look at it and see how proactive this thing is done. So 25 other uh, Gram Panchayats in that district took up this task on their own. We didn't have to spend a single penny. They literally did it at their own cost. Then what happened? The neighboring district, the additional district magistrate, he went to the commission for a hearing. So the commissioner told him, go to this village and take a look at it. Because it's like children, you know, you go to this Avarmati Ashram. Instead of that, you would go to this village called, uh, um, it's called Kalol, you know, Gram Panchayat. So they went there in Panchman's district. He saw that he was so enthused, he was a very young guy. He went back and he issued direction to 250 panchayats saying this template is available, spend your money and get it done. And I have travelled in at least about you know four or five talukas in Gujarat and I saw about 50 panchayats where they had all spent their money and they had put up information, not just copying what was done in the pilot project panchayat, but adapting the information by filling up the local stuff.
that were unique to those things are is doable so what you need to do is get a plan of action together to advocate with your government with your department to use these templates adapt them you you do the adaptation yourself and give it to them you know they like in school tv so find your way of interesting the getting the government interested and start the business of proactive disclosure in your gram panchayat it's one of the easiest things to do working with other departments is quite difficult but we were very surprised when the police station also agreed to take this up so see if you can make use of it i'm happy to share it with you uh, recently i'll talk to you that's that's uh, <coughs> that's fascinating in the sense that uh, you know we don't uh, sometimes appreciate the power that a little information can have in changing the discourse changing the dynamics changing uh, you know the the transparency levels and even the full approach towards uh, you know how a panchayat is run for that matter uh, we need some success stories just to show uh, show up the enthusiasm while being aware of the pitfalls at all times and we should not think take anything for granted you know but uh, i think that's a good way to go by we have 15 minutes left if anyone wants to step in at this stage please maybe a quick round on the problems of uh, rti in in goa that we are we 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 fee face or we are aware of just to to document some of those it may be just bullet points if anyone can give me a one line bullet point i think one the biggest problem is just non re non replying to rtis no some departments will just not reply to them hi uh, this is josh for years sorry to come in late come come um, i just had one question um i rti is very powerful as i've always said and i found it very effective but what do you do when uh, somebody uh, when you apply it for some <coughs> document and then they tell you back they send you a reply saying we have searched and we have not located that document mm. i mean what is the process forward then because it it appears like a closed case and they just say hey, no this document is not with us and that's it. so how do we know whether they are truthful or they are being truthful <coughs> or it's genuinely not available or it is just been made to disappear because you've asked for it is is it a query is it a question of how we being careful about how we frame the questions also venkat how ah, yeah. no because what i'm saying is that uh, you know we always try as journalists we are always trying to ask open ended questions it should not be a yes or no kind of answer no so of course as as was pointed out by krizel uh, dias if you ask too broad a question then they are going to say sorry we don't we do, we we are, we are not supposed to reply to these kind of issues but it should not be too broad it should not be too narrow either venkat some suggestions on on this specific issue of document yeah yeah now there is some very big old case law this is five go missing not because they have gone missing but they don't want to be seen <coughs> what you do in all such cases if they say mean before i explain what needs to be done you know shit files can go missing for two reasons the first is again you know they go missing they are actually legitimately destroyed as per what is called the record retention schedule not every file is required to be maintained eternally by government agency there are uh, periods that are written down in their record retention schedule which file should be kept for one year which file should be kept for one year after the auditing is complete which one should be kept for five years which one for eight which one for 10 which one for 25 and which one should never be destroyed so ask for a copy of the record retention schedule applicable to the department concern and you will know with clarity what is the life span of one file if it been legitimately destroyed it means that there will be something called a record reading register so there an entry has to be made as to which record or what file number uh, was destroyed on which date under whose authority and that reading register is a permanent record it can't be destroyed ever so you will have a record of all the files that have been destroyed like this the second reason why a file goes missing is because somebody is placed it somebody doesn't want the public to see it etc etc no that is a hanky panky thing that is going on in such cases if they tell you that the file is missing you must immediately the case is not closed sorry miss you must immediately file an appeal and say that the public <coughs> information officer has not indicated whether the file has been legitimately read out instead he simply said it is missing and therefore it is a case for ordering an inquiry about 
missing file which means it is missing government property government or department being the custodian of that information has a duty for its safety team. and if they don't do it there is a set of procedures that must be activated so let the appeal authority decide the matter ordinarily what they should be doing is they should direct the information officer to trace that file or direct the concerned section which they dispose the file to trace it they will not find it if they find it they will give it to you or whatever they, they don't find it file a second appeal commission has to direct that a committee be formed it's not written in the law but this is practice it has come to series of decisions that have been uh, uh, laid down by various high courts the delhi high court and bombay high court being the most prominent so a committee has to be formed the committee has to make the effort in the department to locate the file even then if they can't locate the files now it is very very clearly written that in the bombay high court judgment and the delhi high court judgment that the department concerned must cause a first information report to be filed with the police about the missing file which means they have to start an investigation in bombay what happened with it here somewhere in maharashtra what happened with it <coughs> i think it was the open development department it said files were missing commission directed that the fir should be filed because they simply could not trace it even the committee could not find it and what the department did was they said we don't know who is responsible and therefore we can't find the fir so the matter went to the bombay high court the bombay high court said atash johnson don't talk crap you know you have to file the fir 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 you know you have to find out who in whose custody the uh, file was last located and then they will take the responsibility so that is the law there then the high court said the same thing in another case but they still could not find the file is a very interesting thing state government said we have sent the file to central government central government said we don't know where the file is located so then the high court said this is completely wrong file must be traced and then what happened they still could not find the file So this RTI applicant went back to the court and said, "Under this jurisdiction, please issue direction to the department concerned, this is the tourism department, to locate the file and file an FIR." So Delhi High Court said that look, this is the case of a missing file. There are procedures given in the CRPC which you can use to activate the criminal investigation process. We will not use the extraordinary writ jurisdiction of the court because you already have an option in law. So you, as the RTI applicant, who has been told. That the file has gone missing, has the right to cause an FIR to be filed under Section 164.1. If the local police station does not file it, you file a complaint with the district uh, head of the district police under Section 164.3. So thanks to that judgment today, if the department which says the file has gone missing does not file an FIR with the police, the RTI applicant now has the right by citing the, uh, the Delhi High Court judgment to get an FIR filed about the missing file. Then let us see what. thank you that's excellent thank you there is so much that we don't know and we are just waiting to know so uh i have another query from uh please please go ahead. Right. go ahead go ahead go ahead yeah so for the next uh, the i mean not the next but the future of uh, information uh, future type of information is uh, geos to geo reference information is basically a uh, based on a gis uh, system where all uh, data and uh, and assets and whatever you want to call it like is geo reference on a satellite map and once and since then that dealt with is we have dealt with uh, recently is a coastal zone management plan where uh, where sand dunes uh, high tide line etc were were mapped by an agency appointed by the government uh <coughs> those maps on on satellite map which were circulated as draft pdf uh file for us to you know comment on so we asked the rti for those shape files they called there the data is uh, the format is a shape file and what the department said is that due to security reason national security reason they cannot share the shape file Now this was in contrary to the uh, D, uh, DOIT circular of uh, Goa, which was circulated all departments saying shape files should be made accessible to any department or any individual or group, uh, because that is a national.
national policy on uh, geo, uh, GIS uh, system where uh, geo reference maps have to be uh, circulated for whatever research purpose or anything that sort of thing. There's no purpose mentioned, but they have to be kept open for the public. So, yeah, so now considering uh, a lot of data is going to be in form of geo reference, whether it is like, uh, say, sewage lines, electricity lines, uh, I mean, all sort of uh, survey, land survey. All these things are going to be your reference, which is going to make it easier for activists, environment activists, and any other to to uh, interpret maps. Uh, you don't need a surveyor to come on the ground and do surveys to see the boundaries of a plot, for example. But uh, certain departments are still hesitant to give this information under RTI. Uh, so that's uh, that's something that we as a collective have to uh, go ahead because uh, I mean, as a demand. Uh, that this situation <coughs> accessible. And second issue is recently I noticed a trend in in the town planning, uh, the PDAs, and even in the uh, CZMA, Coastal Zone Management Observed GZMA, is that uh, whenever you ask for a construction or so as a survey number, because as citizens we don't have reference to anything else, maybe the name of a structure or name of a hotel or uh, this. They say that, you know, we, don't, we cannot uh, find a file for this, kindly give us a reference number of the file. So now they are using uh, ignorance to deny information. So if an illegal construction is coming up uh, on a particular plot, what we should do is ask for a survey, not all the construction or survey number, and we used to get those files. But now they are saying, no, we don't, uh, you know, the using survey numbers, the files cannot be traced. Therefore, uh, if I only give us the construction reference number or, you know, technical reference number so that the file can be given to you. Now, how do we tackle that issue? Is there any judgment or something that that uh, in this regard? Where as citizens, we don't need, we should not be. Uh, I mean, where do we get a list of, uh, of uh, say, a construction license number or text? Yeah, very, very, very interesting and pertinent issues. Okay, if I may respond to both of them, please. What I would suggest, Abhinash, is this: first, attach a copy of the department's letter, which says that. So GIS, you know, the, the basic data must be shared with even individuals and make a general application without, without reference to the RTI. Say you are willing to pay the fees, whatever is chargeable, and you would like copies of the information that you want. Wait for a month, send a reminder, then wait for another 15 days, and after that, file an RTI saying that we have submitted a request for this information by attaching a copy of the department's uh, letter. We have not been able to obtain it under the ordinary course of time. Therefore, we are constrained to seek this information under the RTI. And then when they say national security, explain the matter to the commission. And argue it, that... It has already gone to the commission, it has already went to the state information commission, and it was rejected at that level also. Raul then you have to go to court. Then you have to go to court. You have to go to court. That's the next step. You have to go to court. That's the first thing. Now the second thing is, now, according to section 41B, I think it is clause uh, 13 or 14, all licenses, authorizations, permits and concessions that have been issued by any public authority, the details of that, the procedure for doing it and the beneficiaries of those, of those licenses, permits and authorizations must be proactively displayed. So technically speaking, this is information that has to be in the public domain already. They don't want to put it out. So when you ask for that information, you give a reference to this clause and say this is information that should already be in the public domain. Since I have not been able to find this on your website, I am constrained to see this information for you. That's point. <coughs> point number two, if they still tell you no, we want a reference number, then you still escalate the matter to the appeal stage and say, how can, you give you a, how can I give you a reference number when you are not mentioning a reference number according to 41B? So, you know, it's, it's a dead end. Now, what you have to do is this. Sorry. You are quite right. First, the uh, uh, process does not work. We are all supporting each other. And with a kind of third rate appointment that happen in information services most of the time, not all the time, but most of the time, even the commissioners are pretty useless. There are just a handful of commissioners at any given point of time around the country who are pro RTI. Uh, some of the time, not all of the time, there are problems. So you have to be prepared to escalate this matter to, to the policy bench of the Bombay High Court to get a proper ruling without actually taking the commission's decision lying down. Today, unfortunately, that is the preparation we have to make. Why? RTI today is nobody's baby except that of the government. Government doesn't like it. <laughs> the don't like it. 
judges don't like it at all because it covers them as well. Media, well, some of them have started using RTI. I wouldn't say it's as bad as it used to be in the recent years. There are many uh, journalists who file RTI, but again, the number is not adequate. Like in other countries where the most number of information seekers are journalists, not ordinary people, not NGOs. But anyway, we still have to reach that level in our country. So you have to be prepared because ultimately RTI is only the citizen region. If we support it, if we nurture it, if we keep on asking information, if we don't give up, then it will survive. Otherwise, it is going to go just the same way as this beautiful act called Protection of Human Rights Act. We have third rate fellows who are today uh, at the helm of information com uh, sorry, of Human Rights Commission at the central level and at the state level. The glory days under Justice Amanath Mishra or Venkata Chalaya or uh, Justice Varma, they are all gone. Today you have somebody like Arun Mishra. Can't help it. The only way that you can fight this out is by taking the court. Keep fighting for it. Unfortunately, it's a matter of resources, but I'm sure that Goa might have some pro bono lawyers, some young lawyers. It's best to link up with them and take these matters to court. You really need to have something like a war strategy. It's not easy anymore to get information, even in the 16th year, because the philosophy of RTI has not seeped into government. They are still stuck in the philosophy of OTC. And they will deny information to you. So you have to use that. This is my own life experience for the last 16 years. It's becoming more and more difficult to even take a day to day. Even food security act beneficiaries. One, ration, one nation, one ration card. Who are these fellows? Central government doesn't have the information. They say go to the states. I mean, you are the ones who are releasing the grain. States are only identifying the beneficiaries. So under 420, you have a duty to tell me whom have you, uh, you know, selected as beneficiaries finally for issuing those ration cards and for giving, you know, free grain because that money is coming out of your central city. These are all new battles which are now in court. So we have to prepare for this. There is no other way, unfortunately. I'm sorry, but that is what India is today. We only have Jumle Bhaji. Interesting, interesting. Sorry. Carry on, carry on, carry on. Avinash, carry on. Uh, the idea which you said, uh, you explained on how to go about it. I will certainly <coughs> use it uh, next time I file the RTI. Thank you. Th uh, that's that's a very interesting and strong point that uh, that Venkat has made. Uh, of course, he's put in years into it, so he feels uh, he feels a pinch more than all of us. Uh, but nonetheless, we need to also remain optimistic uh, to a certain extent, realistic, uh, realistic, optimistic, hopeful, hopeful, ever hopeful. You never know when things will come along because when it came in 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 ninety seven, it came as a complete shock to us. Till today, we never understood. How and why the state government at that time, headed by Mr. Pratap Singh Rane, actually brought it about? You know, so sometimes accidents happen. Sometimes good accidents happen. We only can hope for the best and uh, hope that citizens uh, take some action. Uh, maybe, maybe we have a lot to learn. Maybe when we share with others, we get empowered. A group like this. I'm sorry about what happened in the morning when I was fast asleep as usual. But uh, unlike Venkat, I'm not a big Democrat. When it comes to running groups, otherwise I believe, <laughs> otherwise I believe in it so so that we. Uh, so if anyone post off topic, they will be <laughs> ejected uh, whenever. <laughs> but uh, and of course, if they apologize and uh, keep to the rules, they are welcome back. That's not an issue. Absolutely. But uh, if there are no more questions, maybe we could wind up here. If there's any more issues, points you want to raise, feel free to. <coughs> But you know, I think Venkat. Yeah, I think please, please. Me. Have we not carried on? Yeah, yeah. This is Joshua again. Joshua. Uh, so I just want to say that this is a really good uh, system and uh, I mean a, a good step forward in the right direction. And thank you so much, uh, Venkat and others who have uh, you know uh, contributed so much. Uh, I think one uh, learning from this, in which I I use everywhere ever since I started using RTI, um, is I just keep telling everybody I meet. You know, anything they need to find out, just tell them, go use an RTI. And, uh, you know, slowly that is the way I think that we can just spread the word. And the more people that are using RTI, the more refined we will, uh, the system will get, I feel. Thank you.
even this ability just to share the information online in a way which is so asynchronous and doesn't disturb us when we are doing other things and all that uh, opens up new possibilities let's see where we can take it but as venkat says the rti is a baby of the citizenry no one is really bothered about it uh, it may get temporary allies for some points of time for their own purpose in goa i think the government servants are major users of the rti themselves when they have some scores to settle which is okay which is fine it's not nothing illegit about that the media uh, some people have started using it in quite a significant way and it's interesting to see their interest and they are digging up stuff they have to get it out of their mind that you know it doesn't fit in with our 24 hour deadline and all which is not an issue at all it's just uh, it's just a straw man because you know you collect information on other points you are not collecting information for tomorrow's story or collecting background information which is very useful and then if we can link up rti with uh, with opposition mla questions that is another ball game altogether in goa we had a very good run a long time back with some mlas who were willing to ask questions and uh, what we couldn't get in through rti they were asking it for us and it become much more difficult for the assembly to block to block uh, these uh, questions and these this information from going out and it sets it on the agenda at a much broader level because it's public knowledge the next day unlike an rti <coughs> last words of wisdom we don't want the meeting to drag also it's been a interesting one and very useful insights uh, venkat you want to close with a round up of uh, well uh, it's, it's too difficult to summarize everything that's been discussed i think uh, we'll all just carry it back in our memories it's been a very interesting discussion uh, <coughs> i'm glad that uh, all of you participated and i'm also glad that you know i thought of volunteering this platform please think of this platform as your own uh, we can have these kinds of meetings more frequently this is just the beginning of a series of things we perhaps we can have more structured meetings you know uh, uh, later on we could even invite some of the former international commissioners prominent activists etc etc where uh, we listen to the, we not only listen to them but we also identify uh, nuclear action points individually and as a community and hopefully more people can join later on so this is going to be a good fun i'd like to thank cedric uh, for uh, uh, you know, agreeing to this idea linus for supporting the idea and for all of you for participating in it um, i am a little uh, disappointed today with uh, advocate ruiz ferreira is actually looking forward to listening to his experience of using that idea because i've seen case law you know that has his name in the cost title so but hopefully next time he will be more forthcoming with his views you would love to learn from his experience and get some wisdom from his own you know efforts to make the government more transparent but once again i would like to wish you all the very best in your rti endeavors please don't give up uh, despite all my frustrations i still continue to file rti every month in fact after covid i have increased the number of rti that i file per year i never file more than 35 to 40 in a year so now the number is more than double this year i might reach 100 because this is last uh, <coughs> go the more we file rti so ultimately my message is this. rti is like our muscle the more you use it the healthy it will be the less you use it it will atrophy so therefore please remember this use rti encourage others to use rti and let's make a government our administration much more transparent than they actually want to be i would like to stop here and over to you sir thanks thanks a ton thanks a ton venkat we are grateful to you because you are adding you. value venkat because you are adding value to to our uh, our presence and of course thanks satan thanks for all the presence and information and all that uh, avinash has put up his hand avinash you raised your hand sorry no i thought it was a clap thing i just okay. wanted to uh, yeah, uh, when did it was sorry. an excellent session i have not uh, tremendous book Thank you. We'll come back. We 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 will we will take your offer and we'll come back. We'll have this, okay? Thank you. Thanks, Satan. Bye. 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 Bye.